So I was just mid filming a vlog and realized that I haven't done a monthly reading wrap up in like four months. <laughs> So I immediately sat down to do this video because fall is quickly approaching. Actually, it is officially fall now. It's been fall for like a week now, but I felt in my heart that it's been fall for like about a month. I filmed a fall book recommendation last week without even realizing that I never did my summer monthly wrap up. So this video is gonna be every single book I read this summer. So June, July, August, and September, four months. I haven't done a wrap up since May. Hope you guys enjoy seeing everything I've read. There's honestly not that much. I mean, there is. There is a lot of books to talk about, but it's not that much for four months. Like I was traveling and moving and all that. So I didn't read as much as I probably should have or would have liked throughout the summer, but I do have a really, really good books. I have a lot to talk about that I haven't even talked about before on my channel at all because I haven't talked about books a lot this summer. So first book I started in June was Fourth Wing. So this video is already off to a great start because I'm sure if you haven't read this book, you've at least heard about this book because it, it was like the bestseller of the summer. This was like the book of the summer and I absolutely loved it. It's the first fantasy I've ever really read for now. It was everything I kind of really like in a romance book and it made me kind of have an epiphany that maybe I do need to start getting into more of the romanticy genre, which I've thought for a while, but this really confirmed it because I feel like I love when there's more to a story than just the romance, but I do like the romance to be the main plot, but I like that there is so much more to the story. There's mystery and adventure and friend groups and found family and like a whole really well-developed setting where you feel like you're actually part of the story. And that's always been what I liked and it's why all my favorite books of all time are like long series because I like that. I love this book and I think it's it was a great introduction into fantasy and made me want to actually start the genre because it wasn't like just world building and boring, which is what I was worried about going into the genre. So I'm very excited for the next book of this series to come out. I have no idea where it's gonna go because like the romance is like pretty developed already, but I'm excited to find out. A romance aside, like I just love the plot. So like I don't really even care, which like never happens. So yeah, I actually think it's really cool because this is an arc that I got sent. Like you can see at the top, not for sale, advanced reader copy. So this is like a really cool gem that I have, but I didn't even realize, but I love this book. I made my best friend read it like a month ago and she was updating me on everything and I was getting to relive it and it was amazing. So that's the first book that started the summer. Started off on a real high note. And then I read a book from a companion novel series I started a while back and this is a long time coming by Megan Quinn. I read the first book, skipped the second and read the third, which I never really do, but, but I was really excited to get to this book because this one was childhood friends to lovers and it was hinted at in the first book. So I wanted to read it and I did and I liked it. It was good. Not as good as a not so me cute Which was the first one, but I mean it wasn't childhood best friends. It was like long-term friends. Sorry They met in college, but they're like in their 30s now And I liked it because it was that trope where like we've always just been friends But now she got engaged to someone else and suddenly I'm realizing I'm in love with her and I cannot let her get married That was a trope, which I love then there was the new Elsie Silver book that came out, Reckless, and this is one of my favorite series of all time. I can't, I talk about it so much, I need to shut up, but this one was the fourth book. Not my favorite, but I still loved it. I love the characters in the universe and the found family so much that I don't even care what the characters do at this point. The only thing I just didn't love was that it was accidental pregnancy, but the way they did it was like, good. So I still really loved it, and I love the characters, and I can't wait for the new book that is coming out in like two weeks or something. I have very high expectations, but I don't want this series to end because that one's the last one. But if you haven't read this series yet, I highly recommend it. Um, it's small town cowboys with like each book has a different really good trope and then they all live on the same branch. It's found family and it's amazing. Then after I read that, I was like, I need to stay on this small town wave. And then I found a small town brother's best friend which is Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. And this one was super cute. It was definitely like a short, not like very deep, but still really, really good. She's like a professional horse rider. I forget what it's called, like the barrel racing. I don't know what it's called, sorry. Not a cowgirl. She got injured and now she's like really suffering with like anxiety about racing. And then her brother's best friend is kind of like helping her and they've always like hated each other growing up. Um, they never really got along. Like he always teased her. There's a little bit of an age gap between them. And the brother is like not okay with them being together. So there's like the secretive element. I love a good brother's best friend. So you know I love this, especially because it's a small town on a ranch. Then I read Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. This is only the second book I've read by her, but this is definitely my favorite. I don't know what I loved about it and I can't even tell you like really the trope besides like she was like fake dating his brother. And then he was kind of onto them being like, I just know that you don't love him, like whatever. They ended up falling for each other while she was fake dating the brother. It was really good. It's women in STEM. I think all of her books are. So like you get to see like a girl in the workforce 
that's dominated by men and he was so like low-key supportive of her like outwardly he was a hater but inwardly he supported her and i loved it and i think everyone really liked it like I, i've seen everyone talking really highly of it all summer then i read the true love experiment by christina lauren and i loved the soulmate equation and this was like the second book in that companion novel series but you can read it as a complete standalone and this book was so so good it really surprised me i think i gave it four and a half stars and in the moment i was like is it a five but i like let it marinate and i think it's four and a half just because of like one little like thing that comes out towards the end i was like you ruined it you ruined it for me like i can't look past that but the book was so unique. It's hard, I feel like, for a romance to be completely unique, and I feel like this one kind of was because the trope I've never seen before. Basically, he is the producer of a TV show, and his like company gave him the task of hosting a reality dating show, and he does not want to do it. But he ends up remembering this girl he met a while ago who had like a really bubbly personality, and he like really liked her at first. And he's like, she would be perfect for my show. He gets her on the show. She like somehow agrees to it. But right before they start filming, him and her, like the producer and the girl who's going on the dating show, you can tell there's sparks between them. They're both feeling some type of way. Like I think they end up hooking up or something right before the show. And then they're like, we can't do this. Like you're going on my dating show. The whole point of the show is for you to find your, your husband. Like we can't do this, whatever. So they like try to keep their distance from each other. But the whole show, he's like the producer. He interviews all the contestants. So he's on TV with her, interviewing her about being in love with other men and the tension that builds up between them because of this like obviously there's jealousy obviously she's like i don't even want to be with any of these men like i want to be with you but they're on tv so she's like going with it she's dating these guys it was just really good and like towards the end it got a little bit predictable like you kind of knew what was going to happen so that they could end up together but i thought it was super cute and i enjoyed it then i read this book which is next to you by hannah bonham young and I only read this book because I saw one quote from it. It's friends to lovers, um, but he is obsessed with her. I mean, she doesn't know that, but like, we know it. Like, he was literally in love with her. There's a quote in this book that I saw, and she was like, are you flirting with me? And he was like, I have been for years, thanks for noticing. I saw that quote, and I was like, sold, give it to me now. I didn't even realize this was part of a series. It's the second book, but you can read it completely on its own. I did, and I had no idea. It was cute. The quote did it for me. The quote was always gonna do it for me. I love a good friends to lovers. But the, the only thing that like this book really frustrated me because it was kind of like friends with benefits being like, we can hook up, but we can't date. And I'm like, why? Like literally why? And they're like, we don't want to ruin our friendship. Like you are already hooking up just date at this point like i know that's the whole point of the book though like they can't be together but they want to be together but annoying like that trope annoys me when they just like should be together and everyone knows it and like they're just being stupid and i reread one of my faves i feel like i reread this every year archer's voice something about reading this every year like i just have such a vivid setting and character like descriptions in my head like when i reread this book it's the same every time like it's like i'm rewatching a movie and i love that it's so comforting if you know this book it's innocent boy sunshine girl she moves to a new town he's like the town outcast everyone in the town hates him there's all these rumors about him and she's the only one that gives him a chance it's so sweet and precious and i don't know why but it's like literally my comfort book so i read that because i knew i was <laughs> about to start filming my reading dark romance for a week video and i was like i just need something light before i go into this if you haven't seen that video you can i'll try to link it but i read dark romances for a week obviously so start that's what's starting now these books first i read still beating all these books watch my other video about these books before you read them because i go more in depth and like they're so triggering and crazy but entertaining nonetheless but this was like so much more sick and twisted and dark than i thought it was gonna be i wasn't expecting that i think i gave that one three stars it wasn't my favorite then i tried to read hideaway dnf i hated it <laughs> this is i think my only dnf of the summer oh no there's one other but i dnf this because i hate misogynistic characters and the men in these books are just so disgusting like the way they talk about women is so off-putting and disgusting that i just like couldn't even read it i can handle a bad boy and like a, a mean kind of grumpy main character but as soon as he's like sexist you're getting you're getting immediately no immediately no then i read the first three books in the dark verse series which i was obsessed with i need to finish this this actually just reminded me i need to finish the last two books this series is so so good like exactly the kind of dark romance i like it's mafia so these two books are about one couple and then this one's about a third and then the other two books are about two other couples and it's just really good and entertaining it's like watching a movie when you're reading it and i loved the slow burn romance of the first two was like exactly what i love in a book like waiting for the build-up his character development from being so grumpy and like not believing in love to like having a soft spot for her then i read haunting adeline which 
<laughs> literally traumatizing, but I couldn't stop reading it. My whole review of this book is like, I don't know what I feel about it because it was so gross and twisted and I knew what I was reading. Everything that was happening was so wrong, but I couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop, but I wanted to. I haven't read the second one and I don't know when I will or if I ever will, but that was that. And then as soon as I finished those books, the week was over, I was free. And I was like, I need the softest, sweetest, cutest book I can imagine to cleanse myself of that. <laughs> and the Red, White, and Royal Blue movie had come out that week. So I was in my Red, White, and Royal Blue era. So I was like, I'm rereading it. I don't care. You guys know it's one of my favorite books of all time. I read it like three years ago and it was an automatic five stars and it has been ever since. The movie was so cute. Like the movie was different than the book, but I still love the movie and I think it's so precious and I just love, I love. And then I was like, you know what? I am in my soft girl romance era because then season two of Heartstopper came out and I love Heartstopper. I've talked about this in videos before. It's like my comfort show for some reason. I love it so much and it's so different than anything else I like because it's such like a young adult, like cutesy teen romance, but I love it. I don't care. I read the books finally. There's four of them out right now. I think the author's working on a fifth. And now I know what's gonna happen in the next season, which is so exciting because they follow the books like so accurately. It's so cute. It's literally the cutest. It's just so wholesome. And like it deals with such like heavy, intense, serious topics, but the overarching story is just the most wholesome, cute, perfect, comforting books. Next, I read Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young again. This book was so, so good. I wanted to start getting into like some more fall vibes books. I think I read this in August and it like sets, takes place on Halloween. And I just talked about this in my fall romance rec. It was really, really cute. I think this one would have been five stars if they just gave me a little bit more depth. Like I just felt like there was something missing because I, I think they gave it four stars. Or four and a half or four i think i gave it four because the characters the man especially i loved him and despite it being accidental pregnancy it was so so good like the way they handled it was so good but i feel like i, I wanted to see them get to know each other more you know like i wanted to see them fall in love with each other more than we got so that's the only reason it wasn't five stars it's like i felt like there was like a piece missing like i just needed a little bit more then I don't have a physical copy of this book. It's Funny Feelings by Tara DeWitt. I read this one because I heard it was fall vibes as well and I was trying to gear up to fall. It was cute, but not my favorite. This girl and her boss, but like she's super close to their boss outside of work. Like they're like family, single dad, and they're both comedians and he's kind of like her mentor. And you could tell that they're also both in love with each other, but it's like that trope of like not wanting to cross that line because they work together. And then it turns into fake dating and then it kind of like turns into them dating from there. But I gave this one three stars because it just like missed the mark for me like a little bit. It was good, but it wasn't spectacular to me. I wasn't itching to read it. I wasn't wanting to go into the next chapter. Like I was kind of like, okay, how many pages are left? Like. This is dragging a little bit. Then I read The Wrong Mr. Right by Stephanie Archer. I need to read the rest of the series because it's actually like a four book series and this is the second book. But this one out of all of them, the trope intrigued me the most. So I picked this one to read first and I really liked it. It was good, innocent girl who works in a bookstore and then like the town surfer outgoing kind of playboy. They strike up a deal where she like runs his social media and then he's like teaching her how to date. So it's like practice dating and he's like a famous surfer. So he needed help with his social, like she starts running his social media and like blowing him up because he needed like more publicity before going to this big competition. I don't even know. He also teaches her how to surf and they spend like every morning together surfing. He's like building up her confidence so that she can go on dates. And I love the practice dating trope because you can tell how jealous and like they actually want to be the guy that's going on the dates with her and not this weird man that he set up with her. Again, this was like good. It was good. I'd read the rest of the series and I'd probably love it, but on its own, it was good. I'd recommend it, didn't change my life, but it was like an easy, fun, good girl, bad boy trope, you know? Okay, then I tried to read The American Roommate Experiment and this is the other book I DNF'd. I read maybe the first like four chapters, so I didn't really give it a chance, so I'm probably gonna go back to it at some point, but I said this in another video, but I just like hate the embarrassing girl trope. Like when she does embarrassing things, back to back to back, like falling on the ground, saying super embarrassing stuff, like rambling on and on and on, and then being like, oh my God, why did I say that? And it's like so physically revolting and like I'm cringing and I can't even turn the page because I'm like, she is so embarrassing. That's what I felt in this book, like within the first two chapters. Like, I don't know why, I, I just couldn't turn the page. I had to stop. Um, so I haven't gone back to it yet, but now that I've maybe gotten past that initial embarrassment, 
I'll be fine. I really wanted to love this because I loved the Spanish Love Deceptions. I'm gonna try again soon. I might listen to the audiobook or something, I don't know, but I couldn't do it in the moment. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> then I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown, which I read this before, except I don't remember anything that happened in it because I read it, I think two years ago when I was in a reading slump. I, I think I talked about this in a video two years ago or something. I tried to read this series to get me out of my slump, but I was so deep in the depths of a slump that it took me like a month to read this book. I probably read like two chapters every other day. Like I barely read it, like I barely touched it. So because I dragged it out so long, I didn't remember it at all. So I was like, I need to give it a second chance and read it. And I actually listened to the audiobook for this one while I was in the process of moving. So like as I was packing and stuff, I was listening to this and I actually thought it was really cute. I kind of remember vaguely like things happening, but like I had no initial feelings towards them because I read it so slowly that I didn't even care about it in the beginning. It's Grumpy Sunshine, she has a chronic illness and he's like, does he, is he like the landlord of her building or he like lives in her building? So it's like kind of forced proximity. He was like protective of her. It is a little bit of quirky girl trope, but because I was listening to the audiobook, it wasn't as painful for me to get through because I wasn't like physically reading it where I was like, oh my God, like turn the page, turn the page. I was just listening to it being like, oh my God. This book was like a lot steamier than I thought it was gonna be. Like I thought this was gonna be a fade to black book and it was not that at all. I'm not complaining. Right after that, I read the new Kate Canterbury book, which is called Shucked. I love this book. It's Brother's Best Friend, and it was so cute. Forced proximity. She owns a cafe, and he owns a restaurant, and they're kind of like right next to each other. They didn't get along growing up either. He was always kind of mean to her, but now he's like obsessed with her. Like this was the definition of boy obsessed, except he didn't want to admit it. Kind of a slow burn, a slow build up. Again, the brother did not want them to be together, so that like adds another element to it. And then I really liked it though. And the characters from In A Jam, which is one of my favorite books, made an appearance in this book, which is like my favorite part. So I was like, oh my God, I love them. And I love that these are in the same universe. So yeah, I recommend this one for sure. I gave this one four stars. Then I read The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. I read this one to get into the fall spirit again for the fall video and it was super cute. I think this one is also like considered a fantasy or a romance fantasy, I don't know. Super short, super easy, super cute. Definitely like a comfort book. Like she is a witch and she gets hired to go to this school to teach other young witches and then it ends up being like found family, like the other teachers and staff that work at this. It's basically like a house with three girls that's like a school of witches, but she moves there and she like becomes found family with all the staff and then she's really close with the three little girls and then the kind of father figure to these three little girls is the librarian at the school and that's who she has a romance with he's like grumpy and quiet and don't really talk in the beginning but you can tell there's like tension between them and then it's like a slow buildup of a romance but i feel like the romance was like not the main point of this book like i feel like there's so much more to it it's like more about her self-discovery and coming to terms with herself and like finding a place where she felt at home because like she was always moving around because she never felt like anyone understood her she never found like people that cared about her she didn't have a good friend group until going to the school and it was more about like I finally feel at home. Home is where the heart is. And that's like kind of the premise of the book, but she did also have a romance. And it was really cute. And I definitely think if you want like a very fall cozy book, that you'd really enjoy this. But then I read the next book in the Brown Sisters series, which was Take a Hint, Danny Brown. This one was really cute. I think I liked this one a lot more than the first one. I gave this one four stars. This one was Friends to Lovers with like badass, really confident female man character. Kind of a more quiet, shy, reserved main character until they were like alone together. And then I was like, damn. Where did this man come from? Again, more steamy than I expected. I really like this one until again, there's so many books that I feel like I love until the stupid third act breakup that is so pointless that happens in every book. Some books I'm like, okay, this is more understandable than others. And I know it's like a plot. It keeps the plot going and like gives you the happy ending. But sometimes the third act breakup is so pointless that I'm like, you just shouldn't have even included it. And that's how I felt with this one. Like they were literally so in love and finally happy and then there was a stupid third act breakup that literally made no sense. Up until that point, I was like, yes, this is amazing. And then I got there, I was like, of course. Next, I read Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. This was the new knock em out book. I've been anticipating this for years and it lived up to all my expectations, which I never expected to say. Like for some reason, I thought I was gonna be disappointed by it because I hated the second book, but this third one, it blew me out of the water and loved it. So the first book I liked a lot. At the time I gave it five stars. The second one, I didn't like it at all. I gave it two stars. And then the third one, this one, I gave five stars again. So good. This is childhood best friends to enemies, like hate each other to lovers. And they hated each other. And there's like an actual reason why they hate each other and how to falling out. It's not like something stupid, like something actually did happen between them. And you're trying to figure out what it is. Like it kind of is flashing back and forward. And in the present, they're in the same friend group. And it's like a found family of these six best friends. 
they're in the same friend group but they hate each other and no one knows why no one even really knows that they had this history of like being childhood friends and like basically lovers in high school no one even knows that happened and so we get to see it like unfold in this book and i really loved that and i also loved their relationship and i loved how long it was and i never wanted it to end like i was reading i was flying through this book and i'm so happy with it i'm sad the series is over because it was really cute like even though i didn't like the second book like overarching all f like together with all the books i love it like the found family and like all the couples i just didn't love the second one but this was like the perfect ending and like i loved it so much it was so cute this is when i don't have any physical copies left but these are the books i've been reading recently i listened to the kingmaker by kennedy ryan and the rebel king by kennedy ryan which is a series and i listened to that on my drive to south carolina well i listened to the first one and then i read the second one but anyway it was not what i expected at all i thought it was gonna be a mafia book for some reason like the something about the title like the kingmaker i thought was gonna be mafia but it wasn't two books about the same couple so it's like a really developed storyline i was so emotionally invested like these books weren't my favorite in like the way that i was like this just like is the best book i've ever read but i was so emotionally invested and like you would just get so attached probably because they're so long and there's two books about the same couple but it's a very political story like so much of this book series was all about politics or like things surrounding politics because she grows up to become a lawyer his brother is running for president and he's like kind of in the campaign if scandal like if you've watched scandal the show if scandal was a book it would be this like i love scandal it's actually the show i'm watching like i've been watching on and off for like the past few months i'm still not done so no one spoil it for me the fact that it's between like the campaign manager she ends up becoming the brother's campaign manager but they've no they've had this long history of being together but now they can't be together publicly because she's a campaign manager of his brother's campaign there's just so much politics to it and so many like political issues there's also like kidnapping assassinations like all this crazy shit that happens in Scandal also happens in this series, plus their romance. It's giving Fitz and Olivia, like they've known each other forever. They've been in love for forever, but they can't be together. Like it's just like not morally right for them to be together right now. It's on and off, it's back and forth. And I loved it. I was so emotionally invested in it. And then right after that, I read Love Light Farms by BK Borison. This was a Christmas book, which I didn't know, but I should have because of the cover, but I read it on my phone. So I like didn't really realize, but it was super cute and wholesome. Again, friends to lovers. And I loved it. Up until the third act breakup again it was so wholesome so sweet like she owns a christmas tree farm he's her best friend he lives like four hours away and he grew up in the small town where the christmas tree farm is so everyone there knows him and everyone in this town wants them to date and like knows that they're in love with each other but the two of them like have never crossed like the friendship line until they start fake dating because she's trying to get publicity for her farm because she's like low-key going under they don't have a lot of money a social media influencer is coming to like stay at their farm and promote it on social media and she thought it would get them a lot more attention if they made it into like kind of a cute love story being like me and my boyfriend started this farm so she fake dates her best friend to get publicity basically and it works to an extent but they end up falling for each other obviously they've already been in love then they're super in love she literally in her point of view she's like i've been in love with him since i met him she says it over and over again and and then they're finally together they're finally happy he like confesses his feelings to her and then there's a terrible third act breakup like actually this one probably made me more mad than any third act breakup i've ever read like i wanted to literally dnf the book and i was like 90 percent in because it was so frustrating i was like are you dumb like are you stupid it actually it, it gets me mad to think about right now i remember i sent a video to my best friend like she hasn't even read this book and i needed to rant about it so bad i told her everything i was like i'm so fucking pissed off that this is so fucking stupid like it doesn't make any sense i'm so mad but then it got resolved obviously because it's a romance but so stupid and frustrating like the third act breakup literally made no sense at all it irked my soul so i gave it three stars because it would have been like four but third act breakup just ruined it so and then the book that i'm reading right now i'm actually i'm 94 percent in so i'm basically done it's here with me by Brooke Montgomery which I haven't seen anyone really talk about and I found it because I looked up single dad small town romance and I found this book it had really good reviews so I was reading the description for it and it was like okay small town this girl she like works on a ranch her family owns the ranch love interest starts working at the ranch too and I'm like okay this is interesting I love a good small town and then it's like okay he has a son that I keep reading the son is her ex-boyfriend it's ex-boyfriend's dad trope and there is like a 20 year age gap between them but she's in her 20s so like it's not like that weird i mean a little bit but like she's in her 20s at least but the fact that it's her ex-boyfriend's dad i was like give it to me now i have to read it like that is so funny like that is iconic it's crazy so far i mean i'm not done i haven't gotten to the, like the very end but she used to go out with this guy 
they broke up, but they're still friends. But like, not really, like he's kind of a dickhead. She ends up having a one night stand with his dad without realizing it's the dad. She's never met the dad because the dad kind of like left and didn't really raise his son. Um, you find out more of the story there. So like the dad and the son aren't close. She never met the dad, but she slept with him now. So now she's slept with the dad and the son. The son is now trying to get back together with her and she is obsessed with the dad. And now she's falling in love with the dad and the dad's okay falling in love with her. And they're trying to keep their distance, but now they work together. The dad and the ex-girlfriend work together. So they see each other every day. So now they're falling in love and like the son is trying to get her back. And like, it's all this drama. The dad's trying to repair his relationship with his son, but now he can't because they both are in love with the same girl. It's literally love triangle with the dad and the son. That's fucking crazy. The drama of it all, imagine that was real life. I'd be so stressed out. I would be so, oh my God. But that was the most recent book I read, and those are all the books I've read since June, since May. I hope you enjoyed, and if you want to follow me on my other social medias, they're all linked down below as always, and I'll see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye!